Canals are man-made waterways that allow the passage of ships through land. Some are big, some are small, and some are so thin, sometimes boats get stuck for days at a time. But in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the top 15 longest canals on Earth. Let's begin. Number 15, the Trent Severn Waterway. One of the longest canals in the world by far is the Trent Severn Waterway. It's located in Canada. This canal route connects Lake Ontario at Trenton to Georgian Bay, Lake Huron, and Port Severn. Some of the natural waterways include the Trent River, like Simcoe, and the Severn River, which offers some of the most stunning views of any canal in the world, and it's even been called one of the finest interconnected systems of navigation in the world. The Trent Severn Waterway was once surveyed as a military route, but this first lock was built back in 1833 as a commercial venture. The construction allowed for the connecting of a number of lakes and rivers near the center of the waterway, which opened a large and important area of navigation by steamship. And bigger ships mean more commerce. The government began construction of three additional locks at the start of the Upper Canada Rebellion in 1837, which led to them re-examining the project, concluding that the route would have too many locks to allow rapid movement for military purposes. It was decided that the locks already under construction would be completed, but the rest would be converted to timber slides. Because of this decision, the inland section had no outlet, and so instead new plank roads, toll roads, and eventually railways were opened to keep business flowing like the waters of the canal. Number 14. The Gotha Canal the Gotha Canal is one of the largest construction projects to ever take place in Sweden, and it still stands as one of the most important waterways in that area. The Gotha Canal runs for an impressive 118 miles and connects Gothenburg to the Swedish capital of Stockholm. And while the Gotha Channel provides the region with an important trade route, it also has an incredibly rich history worth noting. The canal's the brainchild of Baltzar von Platten, an engineer in the early 1800s, with construction lasting from 1810 to 1832. But instead of hiring any old construction workers, von Platten hired 60,000 soldiers to build this piece of engineering history. There's a grand total of 58 locks, one of which is the lock staircase at Trollhattan that consists of four locks with a 105-foot drop, and a visit to the Trollhattan Canal Museum should be on every tourist to-do list. It is an incredibly peaceful and picturesque view, and a great way to see the vintage steamship MS Juno, which operates four-day cruises between Stockholm and Gothenburg, and is the oldest registered cruise ship in the world. Number 13. Leeds and Liverpool Canal If the name of this canal hasn't totally given it away already, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal connects the city of Leeds and Liverpool in northern England. Not to be confused with the English Channel, this English canal covers a distance of 127 miles and has a whopping 91 locks on the main line. This makes the Leeds and Liverpool Canal the longest in the country and second only to the Grand Union Canal, which is composed entirely of merged canals. So unlike its cousin, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal has several smaller branches to explore. Its history dates back to the mid-18th century when the town of Yorkshire was seeing exponential growth and the trading of goods was becoming more and more common. Trade's always good for business, but what's the point if you can't accommodate it all? Yorkshire quite literally needed a way for the new money to flow in, and so in 1966 a public meeting was held to promote the building of what is now the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. Number 12. Volga Don Canal Time to take a trip down the Volga-Don Canal. This canal interlinks the Russian rivers Volga and Don of her namesake, which provides the most important passageway for seafarers all through the Azov Sea, which is in the Bay of the Black Sea, and releasing them through the Caspian Sea, allowing them to reach more of the major ocean networks. She is Russia's biggest shortcut, and if you thought some of the other canals were old, then just wait till you hear about this one. The original construction work on the Volga-Don Canal began back in the 16th century, with the route being recognized for the fact that it provides a more efficient passage for the Eastern European shipping networks to link up with their Western cousins. But the canal didn't open for another 400 years. In 1952, the Volga-Don Canal was unveiled at 63 miles long and passes through the Korpovka, Bereslavka, and Varvarovac reservoirs. But like some others on this list, this Russian canal contained a total of nine separate champers and canal locks along the Volga slope to raise ships up to the adequate water level and another four locks down the Don slope to gently lower them into the shallower waters. 
Number 11. Kiel Canal Another important and popular canal in aiding in the transportation of goods through Eastern Europe is the Kiel Canal. This canal connects the Baltic Sea to the North Sea and gives ships a safe passage through the German province of Schleswig-Holstein. She's an old one too, having officially opened in the year 1895. The Kiel Canal is about 61 miles long and lets captains cut right through the longer routes that would normally take you through the Jutland Peninsula in Denmark. The Danish route has a tendency to be quite treacherous, and you can even tack on an extra 250 nautical miles worth of travel to boot. It's best to avoid that one and make for the Kiel Canal. This awesome artificial waterway begins its route through the North Sea, taking you east to the canal at Brandsbuttel, and finishes out the journey in Kiel Holtenau before giving the ships up to the Baltic Sea. The idea for something like the Kiel Canal was concocted in the 18th century, but it took more than 100 years for the powers that be to break ground took eight years and 9,000 workers to give us what we see here today. Number 10. Corinth Canal This canal plays an important role in connecting the Gulf of Corinth in the beautiful country of Greece to the Saronic Gulf in the Aegean Sea. The canal runs through the waters of the incredibly narrow Isthmus of Corinth and divides the Peloponnese from the Greek mainland. There are a lot of moving parts here, all equally important to keep things flowing smoothly. The Corinth Canal is just under 4 miles long and 26 feet deep, which makes it the deepest canal in the world. This canal's been known to be the famous route that seafarers can rely on to keep a safe distance from the rough waters of the Peloponnesian Cape, meaning it's always smooth sailings here. But one thing that's pretty tough to miss about this canal is the width. It's pretty damn skinny, so if the captain and navigators aren't on their A-game at all times, it could prove to be disastrous. And because it's such a skinny passage, the Corinth Canal can't accommodate most modern ships, so its economic importance is lacking. But in just one year, this narrow canal sees up to 15,000 ships from 50 different countries. Number 9. Danube Black Sea Canal One of the most important passageways into the western and European regions of the Earth is the Danube Black Sea Canal. If you haven't guessed it already, this canal connects the Danube River to the Black Sea, but also interlinks the Black Sea to the North Sea through her Danube Main Rhine Channel. There's a lot going on here with plenty of moving parts, but it provides one of the most efficient ways to get to the Volga Don Canal as well, and on to Eastern Europe. The Danube Black Sea Canal allows shipping vessels to completely bypass the rough waters and unnecessary headaches of the Danube Delta, and instead provides a smooth and steady flow all the way down. This means no cargo going overboard and no late shipments due to bad weather. Consistency and continuity are key here, and the Danube Black Sea Canal certainly aims to please. The main branch of the canal is 40 miles long and was built between the years 1976 and 1984, and as that project was wrapping up, construction began on the northern branch in 1983 and took just four years to complete the 20-mile long section. And while this canal is a major player in the European trade routes, it's also played host to countless ships that were ferrying tens of thousands of political prisoners for the evacuation. Number 8. Panama Canal Perhaps giving birth to one of the silliest palindromes and limericks of all time is one of the most well-known canals in the world. The Panama Canal is without a doubt one of the most important waterways in all of history, serving as the ultimate maritime gateway in the West. The Panama Canal connects the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic all through the Panama Isthmus, which is an incredibly narrow strip of water that separates the Caribbean Sea from the Pacific. But this is an interesting one too. You see, the two seas that the Panama Canal keeps separated don't have the same water level, meaning one is higher than the other. So what happens here is the canal implements two lock gates on either side to lift vessels higher or drop them down to the artificial Gatun Lake built to reduce the amount of excavation work in the canal. Think of it as an elevator in the sea. The Panama Canal opened to seafarers in the year 1914, providing a much-needed godsend to traveling pretty much everywhere. Before she was lifting and lowering ships, the journey from the United States' west coast to the east coast was nearly 10,000 times longer. The waterway is just 51 miles long and provides a much-needed service to 29 of the major liners, generally from the U.S. East Coast to Asia trade route. So far, well over 13,000 vessels and a total of 403 million tons of cargo have passed through these wet halls. Number 7. Saima Canal Without a doubt, the Saima Canal runs along one of the most stunning locations in the world. 
This body of water is a transportation canal that connects Lake Saima with the Gulf of Finland, not far from Vyborg, Russia. It is an oldie but a goodie. The Saima Canal was built between 1946 and 1956 and was eventually overhauled and widened about a hundred years later. The entire operation involved a system of inland waterways and canals in the 120 interconnected lakes of the south-central and southeast regions of Finnish Lakeland, all of which can be reached through the canal. So if you wanted to visit all 120 lakes, then you better set aside some weekends. The Saima Canal has a draft of about 14 feet and is spread across 506 miles of beautiful, often fairy tale like scenery. There's a total of 8 locks for the larger vessels and 14 bridges over the water, with 12 being made for motor vehicles and 2 for the railroads. The Saima Canal was inaugurated and originally built in what was once the Grand Duchy of Finland and the old Russian Empire, and the canal was eventually divided in 1940, after the signing of the Moscow Peace Treaty. Finland was eventually able to obtain two separate 50-year leases, one from the Soviet Union and another from Russia, and lucky for them, they've only seen one rent increase in a hundred years. Under this new lease, Finland's able to set the maritime rules and regulations for the Saima Canal, and all employees for the canal fall under the jurisdiction as well. It is possible to take the canal between countries, but just make sure you bring your passport with you. Number 6. Canal du Midi Originally named the Royal Canal in Languedoc, the Canal du Midi was named by the French revolutionaries in 1789. The canal still stands today, and at 150 miles long, the Canal du Midi is considered to be one of the greatest construction works of the 17th century. So other than history, what's the canal's importance? Well, this man-made body of water connects the Garonne to the Etang de Tau on the Mediterranean, and along with a 120-mile-long Canal de Garonne, forms the Canal des Deux Mer connecting the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. But the name Canal du Midi refers to a portion initially constructed from Toulouse to the Mediterranean Sea, with the Dumer Canal project aiming to link together several sections of navigable waterways, starting with the Canal du Midi. Work on this French canal began back in 1666, with Jean-Baptiste Colbert's authorization as the country looked to develop a wheat trade during the reign of King Louis XIV. Construction lasted until 1681, just 15 years, which is incredibly impressive for that time period. This is one of the oldest canals still in operation in Europe, and in 1996 was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of its outstanding engineering and artistic design. And in 2016, it was designated as an International Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. Number 5. The Suez Canal Anybody who's anybody has heard of the Suez Canal. Officially opened in November of 1869, the Suez Canal is one of the biggest of its kind at 120 miles long. This canal sits at sea level in Egypt and links the Mediterranean Sea with the Gulf of Suez and is one of the most important and heavily used shipping canals in the world. How important is it? Well, in March of 2021, a cargo ship was stuck in the Suez Canal, completely blocking the waterway for six days, and it felt like the world came to a screeching halt. No goods could get in or get out, and it made for one of the biggest shipping headaches this generation has ever seen. The canal separates Asia from the African continent and provides maritime vessels with the shortest possible route between Europe and any country that borders the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific, which is a lot of places. But aside from that giant mishap in 2021, the Suez Canal is known for being open at all times. That's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. The Suez Canal doesn't take any sick days or holidays and will remain open even in times of war and conflict, no matter who is involved. Number 4. Rhine-Main-Danube Canal the Rhine-Main-Danube Canal is your main man when it comes to important European waterways. This canal links three of the region's most important rivers and links the Black Sea to the North Sea via the Atlantic Ocean. Also known as the much easier to remember Europa Channel, it was built back in the year 1938 and has undergone a plethora of construction and extensions because it became so heavily used. The Europa Canal is a big one, measuring 106 miles in length, and can accommodate barges with a 2,400-ton capacity, so needless to say, she's getting a lot of foot traffic year after year. But perhaps the most important aspect of the Europa Canal isn't the waterway she connects so much as the route itself. Opting for the scenic route, she allows vessels to pass through some of the most beautiful and peaceful German countryside that you'll ever see, making traveling in this canal a little bit of a dream. Number 3. Erie Canal 
don't be scared by the name. One of the most famous of its kind within the United States, the Erie Canal, goes from east to west all through upstate New York and the eastern United States, and is part of the cross-state route of the New York State Canal System. It was built back in the year 1825 to help create a navigable water route stemming from the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes Basin, which goes on for about 363 miles, and then takes it on home from the Hudson River at Albany to Lake Erie in Buffalo, making it one of the largest canals in the world. The canal has a very long history, having been initially proposed in the mid-1780s, only to be repurposed about 30 years later and finally funded in 1808. In the end, it took about eight years to build the Erie Canal. Today, it has a grand total of 34 locks with an overall elevation difference of 565 feet. The Erie Canal is a major trade route for the eastern part of the United States, and before it was built, the region was left wanting for railways, and so pack animals were the primary method of transporting goods. But we all know how slow that is, when they can only carry about 250 pounds of cargo at a time. And aside from trade, the Erie Canal helps bring water to farms and even hydroelectric dams and brings in over $6 billion a year. Number 2. The Karakum Canal Located in Turkmenistan, the Karakum Canal is one of the largest irrigation and water supply canals in the entire world. Construction of this canal began back in the year 1954, but it wasn't until 1988 that it was officially opened for business. That's a pretty long construction job. The canal runs for about 854 miles and hauls about three cubic miles worth of water annually from the Amu Darya River all across the country's Karakum Desert, bringing much-needed drinking water to the masses. This desert canal opened up all sorts of agricultural opportunities with a very big emphasis on cotton monoculture, which was promoted by the former Soviet Union. And the canal is also the biggest supplier of water to Ashgabat, the largest and most extravagant city in Turkmenistan, which is ironically all but a ghost town. But the Karakum Canal was not the first big attempt at bringing water from the Amu Darya River across the desert. In fact, the Soviets had made the first attempt during the 1950s with a project that would involve using up about a quarter of the river's water supply, both for drinking and agriculture. Luckily, though, the project was scrapped and all but abandoned after the death of Joseph Stalin, and the current Karakum Canal uses multiple reservoirs to help keep it running and regulated. Number 1. Beijing Hanshou Grand Canal More commonly known around the world as the Grand Canal, the Beijing Hanshou Canal is not only the longest but the oldest canal in the world. The Grand Canal connects China's Yellow River to the Yangtze River and passes through a multitude of provinces across the country, interlinking many other rivers along the way. The Grand Canal covers 1,104 miles and even reaches a high point of 42 meters when it makes its way through the mountains of Shandong. The Grand Canal is so important to the country as it links the northern regions to the southern, and it's one of China's biggest economic players because of the majority of the ships passing through these waters are all carrying tens of thousands of tons of cargo. And I mentioned that the Grand Canal is old, but just how old? Well, it was originally built in the 5th century BC, so it should come as no surprise that in 2014, the Grand Canal was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.